Hello everyone, Thursday, March 29th, 2018. Of course, yesterday was New Comic Book Day, which means right now, today, is New Comic Book Video Time. I picked up a lot of books yesterday. It was a really big week. So let's jump right into the books, shall we? Saga 50, regular cover here. I can't believe this is already on 50 uh, issues. And then the Virgin cover. The shop only had a couple of them. And one of them had a really bad crease on the back, so I was lucky to find one that didn't have that. So there's that. Daredevil 600, blank cover. Of course, I always buy a blank variant. And Daredevil 600, regular cover. To me, a character that doesn't get a lot of respect in the collector community for the simple fact that uh, you can find... Silver Age and early Bronze Age Daredevils in good grade condition, really, really cheap. It's kind of the same as like Captain America falls into that kind of timeline, and so does Iron Man. Uh, just for some reason, you can find these older books in good condition at a really cheap price. I just don't think they get the attention. I mean, everybody jumps on the Frank Miller storylines with the Elektra, but everybody else just kind of stays away from it, and I don't understand why. I've always loved Daredevil. From eComics, Pussycats number one, the end of everything storyline. This storyline, the Pussycats, kind of falls under the same, and this was the sketch variant right here. They kind of fall under the same as like Belladonna, the Boundless Issues, uh, more adult themed as it relates to the storyline and some of the um, content of the book. And then when they do it, they do a picture cover as well, and they always use a porn star, an adult film star. Uh, to do that, but there's a big market for those. People love to buy them, and they're not real popular. A lot of shops don't carry it because of the content, so if you can find them and you kind of like storylines like that, pick them up, or you're looking to flip them down the road, they always hold their value and do pretty good. So uh, that was um, Pussycats, The End of Everything, book number one. We have Dark Knight's Metal. I usually get the foil cover of this, but all three covers of this today for issue number six yesterday, excuse me, were just really wicked. So this was cover number one, the foil cover. Great looking Joker dragon there. This is the Jim Lee cover. Again, really, really nice. I just, I love that Batman right there. And this has been a great storyline, so uh, I'm enjoying it. And then finally, the um, Tony Daniels cover right there. They're sorry about the glare. I'm doing this a little earlier in the day because there's some light coming into the window, so the glare might be a little more than normal. But really, really cool covers on that. Uh, we talked about the thing with Go Cosmic Ghost Rider. You knew it was a matter of time. Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze number one. Really nice cover. I'm anxious to read this. I like the 70s Ghost Riders. I wasn't real wild about the stuff that came after, but I hope that kind of goes back to the older school uh, original Ghost Rider type of storylines and uh, details. So, Stabity Bunny number three. I love the Stabity Bunny. And then a number two variant cover of Stabity Bunny. And of course, that is the Joker homage for the Neil Adams cover right there with the card, the big playing card. Really, really cool right there. Love that cover. Went to the shop yesterday. I'm usually the first in line or second in line. Uh, my buddy's usually there before me sometimes. And there was a line of people and I was like, what the hell's going on? Don't tell me all these people are here for Power Rangers. And they were. They were there for Power Rangers, Storyline, Shattered Grid. And the only one I wanted was the green ranger helmet. Of course, the black ranger and the pink ranger are also a limited run. This was the most limited of the three, was the green ranger. And I wasn't interested in the other ones. I just wanted to grab one. The shop said one per person. Some people got upset about that. I don't care, I grabbed my one. So, Shattered Grid, Power Rangers. A 794 third printing Amazing Spider-Man. These Carnage covers are just wicked. Guy was like, why are you buying a third a third print? Well, look at this cover. I love that cover right there. You can see I'm looking right there. 
It's just really, really nice. So I bought them. I bought them. Uh, what is this? Spider-Man Deadpool 30. Loving this storyline. Detective Comics 977. Trinity 20. And I picked up a couple of Zombie Tramp covers uh, from some older issues that I liked. Again, Dan Mendoza, local artist here. Sometimes you can find these. These sell really, really well. There is number 45. And my favorite cover right here, number 43. We talked about that earlier, but the, uh, this one is the clothed one. I think I got the topless one before, but they got one more of these in that she has her top on. So I grabbed that one there, Zombie Tramp 43. So that was the pickups for the week. Again, big, big uh, group of books. I spent a lot of money this week because I got multiples on some of those books. Uh, everything pretty much except for the Power Rangers, but you know, Stabity Bunny and all those, I'll, I'll grab extra copies on that. So last week I did a video, of course, and I, at the end of the video, I had a little comment about uh, growing up in the 70s and how it's different uh, for kids today because they really don't have any social skills to speak of because everything is done on cell phone and social media. So I got a lot of response on that. A lot of people are like, you know what? I feel the same way you do. And then I got a lot of comments based off of, what were some of the shows you enjoyed watching in the 70s and maybe early 80s uh, when you were growing up? So I thought, you know what, I'm going to break some of these out. So some of these were on every week when I was a kid and some were in syndication. So we'll jump right into this. No general order, just some things I thought would be nice to show. Uh, Wonder Woman, of course. Linda Carter, I think, is a fantastic Wonder Woman. And I was totally in love with Wonder Woman. And so I used to, couldn't wait every week for that to come out right there. So this was the season one. I have all the seasons. Again, I'm just showing a little bit. So that was Linda Carter's Wonder Woman was a favorite show of mine. Uh, since I like kind of the scary horror genre, this was something that was on syndication. I would watch it. It was on the late shows, usually, you know, 11, 11, 30, uh, 11.30 after the local news. That was Kolchak the Night Stalker about a reporter who just deals with all kinds of, you know, weird things. This was on from uh, 74 to 75. And as a matter of fact, this is what kind of got the X-Files to come back on because the guy enjoyed this as a kid and said, you know what, we can do something now and use FBI agents instead of a reporter. So Cole check the Night Stalker. Everybody knows this one, Sanford and Son. I used to watch Sanford and Son. Uh, I don't remember watching it regular. I remember watching a lot of it on syndication, uh, you know, on channels after the fact. But I love Sanford and Son. And this was all 136 episodes on DVD. And I got this for like $8. How can you go wrong with Sanford and Son for $8? A TV show that a lot of people don't remember or even think, oh, I didn't even know they had one like that. This came out in 1974. Planet of the Apes. Roddy McDowell was in it, you know, doing his role from the original Planet of the Apes movie. But this was just a really good TV show, and I think the only reason they stopped is because it cost a lot to do the episodes. But Planet of the Apes. Everybody knows this one, Honeymooners. A lot of people don't realize this because it's been on for so long. It's still on syndication and still doing things. There's only 39 episodes of The Honeymooners. They only had 39 regular TV issue, uh, episodes. They used to be little shorts on a TV show. Uh, but this was, again, all 39 issues of The Honeymooners. And I think I paid like $15 for it. Uh, why are you going to not buy that? I love The Honeymooners. Early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, Battlestar Galactica. There it is. Lauren Green. This was his post-Bonanza days. Battlestar Galactica, and then Universal Studios had a really great ride, a Battlestar Galactica ride that you went in, they had a battle on the robots, you know, the Cylons cut in half, and really, really cool. And then the success of Battlestar Galactica paved the way for Buck Rogers in the 21st century, 25th century. Again, this is the complete series, and it was like $14. Why would you go wrong on that? Buck Rogers. 
one of my Saturday morning favorites, HR Puffin Stuff. How can you go wrong with HR Puffin Stuff? Came on after Happy Days every Tuesday night. That would be Laverne and Shirley. I love Laverne and Shirley. And there's Shirley on the back with Boo Boo Kitty. If you watch them on Happy Days, the characters were a little bit more streetwise. Uh, what do you call it? Shirley was not so innocent as she is on the Laverne and Shirley show. Great cop show, which I loved. Starsky and Hutch. How can you go wrong with Starsky and Hutch? Anytime you can see Huggy Bear, it's a great day. And just a wicked looking car. Shows I love, Twilight Zone. Every episode of the Twilight Zone. I love the Twilight Zone. Uh, my favorite episode, of course, is The Living Doll, the Taki Tina episode with Telly Savalas. But I saw that and I had to have it. And then, of course, uh, one of my all-time favorites, and I'm sure a lot of you like it as well, Three's Company, 1977 and 1984. The Roper started it, and then, of course, Don Knotts played Mr. Furley, which I thought was just an amazing character. Uh, probably his best character next to uh, Barney Fife, but John Ritter at his finest, so Three's Company. And those, there's a lot of other shows I watch. I watch SWAT and, of course, Charlie's Angels and things like that, but these are just some of the things I watched. And then um, Guy sent a comment and basically said that, you know, he's sorry that I get so upset uh, as it relates to grading. And I'll just make it real quick. I don't get upset because of grading. I get upset because of the greed that greed, that grading brings out in people. And I'll do something on that later on. Uh, so I hope you liked the video. But as always, if you didn't, nothing I can do for you. Have a great night. Thanks for the support. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And subscribe if you're not. I'll see you later.